Instructional Phonetics and Phonology This is Session 5 Phonology and Phonetic Transcription I am Mohsen Reza Zadeh. Currently, I am an Assistant Professor at the University of Sfahan, Faculty of Foreign Languages, the Department of English. Overview. In previous sessions, we talked about articulation and acoustics. Places of articulatory gestures, the oronasal process, manners of articulation like stops, uh, oral and nasal stop, fricative, affricates, approximants, laterals, lateral approximant in fact, we also talked about some additional consonantal gestures and uh, the articulation of vowel sounds, the sounds of vowels, and finally we had a discussion on uh, suprasegmentals. Today we are going to talk about uh, the transcription of uh, phonetics and phonology. A phonetician is a person who can describe speech, who understands the mechanisms of speech production and speech perception, and who knows how languages use these mechanisms. Phonetic description or phonetic transcription is no more than a useful tool that phoneticians use in the description of speech. It is, however, a very important tool. So, uh, in this session, we are concerned with the phonetic transcription of careful speech or uh, the style of speech you use to show someone how to pronounce a word. Uh, there is another style of speech which is called connected speech. In fact, this style of speech you use to show somebody how to pronounce a word is called citation style or citation speech. Transcriptions of citation style are particularly useful in language documentation and also serve as the basic phonetic observations described in phonology. In chapter 5 we will discuss phonetic transcription of connected speech. Uh, connected speech is the style used in normal conversation. When phoneticians transcribe a citation speech utterance, um, uh, they are usually concerned with how the sounds convey differences in meaning. So, here in this session, uh, we talk about citation style or careful speech and we are working on the transcription of careful speech. In order to understand what we transcribe and what we don't, it is necessary to understand the basic principles of phonology. Phonology is the description of the systems and patterns of sounds that occur in a language. It involves studying a language to determine the distribution of sound in words, that is, distinctive sounds, that is, those sounds that convey a difference in meaning. In contrast, phonetics is the production and perception of speech sounds in any language and deals with phone. So the difference between phonetics and phonology is that in phonetics we are dealing with any language and also with phone, but in phonology we are dealing with a particular language, for example English, and it deals with the pattern of distribution of the sounds in words and also it deals with phoneme. Children have 
to do this when they are learning to speak. They may not realize at first that, for example, there is a difference between consonants at the beginnings of words such as light and right. They later realize that these words begin with two distinct sounds, light and right. After some time, they understand that light starts with le and right starts with re. So they later realize these words begin with two distinct sounds. And we call them distinct because the meaning is changed. Eventually, uh, children learn to distinguish all the sounds that can change the meanings of words. This is the uh, meaning of um, uh, distinction. Next thing you need to know is phonetic versus phonemic difference. When two sounds can be used to differentiate words, they are distinct or contrastive. One of the most important properties of a phonological distribution is this relationship called distinctiveness or contrast. So when two sounds can be used to differentiate words, they are said to be distinct or contrastive. The phonetic difference is phonemic here, as opposed to simple phonetic difference. Uh, the phonetic difference, as I said, is phonemic here. In phonetics and phonology, these three terms are used synonymously, distinctive, contrastive, and phonemic. Look at this example. Uh, in a pair like cat and bat, the difference for the first letter is phonemic or phonetic because it is uh, meaning distinguishing C and B. C made the word cat and B lists the word bat. And there is a difference in the meaning. Therefore, it is contrastive or phonemic. Or, for example, um, look at the word, these two words, pill and lip. You see that there is a difference between the le sound in these two words. Uh, your tongue touches the roof of the mouth at a different location in the le of pill than it does in the le of lip. Suppose you said the word lip with the le from pill. For example, something like this. Instead of lip, you say lip. We could write this as double L and IP, lip. These two uh, pronunciations are phonetically different here. So here, the difference is phonetic, not phonemic. Why? Because the tongue has a different position or shape. Uh, we have a different le however this difference is not contrastive not phonemic it is only phonetic because it is um, not used in english to differentiate words if you say for example lip and lip it is not important because i can understand that uh, you mean lip so it is only phonetic not phonemic. Remember that we cannot rely on the spelling to tell us whether two sounds contrast. For example, the words phone and foam. Both of them begin with the same sounds, although they have different spellings P and H in phone and F in foam. 
as you can see the spelling is misleading here so this is why I said that you cannot rely on the spelling to um, differentiate between the meanings um, to take a more complex example look at these two words key and car as you can see the words key and car begin with uh, what we can regard as the same sound despite the fact that one is spelled with the letter K and the other with C. In fact, um, in this case, uh, the two sounds are not exactly the same. The words key and car begin with slightly different sounds, but it is phonetic, not phonemic, because both of them are K sounds. Um, if you remember, I just said that in the previous slide, I said that there's a difference between le in pill and lip. This is the same thing. The k sound in key and car, they're different. If you want to understand the difference, you can whisper just the first consonants in these two words. Uh, here you can probably hear the difference. Let me say it once, whispering. For example, for key it is key and for car it is car now just try to whisper the first consonants k k k k k k and you can see that uh, there is a difference between them you may be able to feel that your tongue touches the roof of the mouth in a different place for each word this example shows that um, there may be very subtle differences between sounds that do not contrast with each other. The sounds at the beginning of uh, key and car are slightly different, but it is not a difference that changes the meaning of a word in English. So we can say that uh, this is a, a phonetic difference this is not a phonemic difference after these introductions uh, now we come to the transcription of sounds first we will talk about transcription of consonants then we will talk about transcription of vowels um, a good way to find consonants that are contrastive in a language is to uh, find sets of words that rhyme if you remember a set of words in which each differs from all the others by only one sound is called a minimal set uh, a set of words in which each differs from all the others by only one sound now think of examples pie spy try as you can see all of them rhyme and there is only a, a difference in one sound look at this thy thy and shy again all of them rhyme so as you see it is a good way to find sets of words that rhyme when we want to transcribe the sounds um, in your book you can go to table 2.1 on page 38 uh, table 2.1 lists a set of this kind there are obviously many other words that rhyme with pi uh, for example, pi, spy, try, spry, but these words begin with sequences of two or more of sounds already in the minimal set. Uh, I will talk about uh, minimal sets in the next slide. In this slide, you can see uh, symbols for transcribing English consonants. On the left side, you can see the symbols. Uh, in fact, these are IPA symbols. 
IPA stands for International Phonetic Association. Maybe there are some alternative symbols that are uh, found in other books, but these are IPA symbols. You need to uh, learn all of these. If you look at the first row, you can see the IPA symbol is B, as in bad or lab. These are minimal sets. Next is D, as in did, lady, F, or as in find, if. Next, uh, the letter, uh, the, the symbol is just like letter G, but we use it for the sound of G, as in give flag just notice the symbols like this so here remember that g is not for j it is for g next symbol is h for he sound like in how hello next is j the symbol is like j but the sound is not j here the sound is y in some books, uh, the symbol for Y is Y, like English letter Y. But here, according to IPA, it is like J. Other consonants are easy, for example, K, L, M, N, and NK. Some people call it NK, and also others pronounce it Angma, Angma ng or angma the sound at the end of words like sing or for example bring or in the middle of a word like finger ng as you can see the symbol is like ne letter n letter uh, together with an extra part combined with uh, we can say a tail uh, next is pe pet and next is uh, re as you can see here, we have two re sounds. The first re is the normal one. Uh, as you can see, the other re sound is upside down. This is because uh, the re sound that we have um, in English is different from uh, the regular re. Mm, for example, uh, look at this word red or try the sound at the beginning of a word for example like rye is symbolized by an upside down letter re it might not matter too much in transcribing english whether we use the turned r or the upside down r or the regular r to write the first sound of rye but in other but in um again in english in order to be consistent with the conventions of ipa uh, we use upside down re uh, but it is okay to use the normal re sound um next is se and then we have she sound remember not to use s and h as a symbol as you can see the symbol of she is different you need to learn this symbol next is te sound showing by t and again here we have another sound which is che a combination of te and she it is che as in church or check this is called diagraph diagraph um, is when we have a mixture of two sounds this is diagraph here as you can see we have te and she and also the last example as in just and large we have another diagraph uh, a combination of um, something like d and uh, another symbol which um, uh, which is called yog in english in english yes uh, the next sound is th. Uh, the symbol is called theta. Th, as in think or both. Next is the. We call it eth. Eth. 
th. For example, this or mother. It is like de, but we have a combination of de and z. Next is v, voice or five. Ooh. Next is we, window, wet, z, zoo, lazy. And the final two sounds are important. One of them is j, as in pleasure. As I said, we call it yok. Or in a sound like uh, vision. And um, the last one is diagraph. And it is j, as in just or large. In this slide, you can see uh, the IPA symbols uh, together with some examples, but all of them are English vowels on the left side. And the right side, you can see the uh, diphthongs. Diphthongs um, are a combination of two vowels, movement, in fact, from one vowel to another within a single syllable. This is called diphthong. Now, from the top, on the left side, look at the symbols, something like um, hashed in Farsi or upside down V in English. It is A sound, as in like cup or luck. Uh, we also call it wedge. This symbol is called wedge. Next is A or long A, as in arm. If it is long, we show in some books they show it with a colon after it. The colon shows that it is long vowel, as in arm. Next is a, uh, as if two letters are attached together, a and e. A, um, as in words like cat or black. Next is e as in away or uh, cinema. Uh, this uh, symbol is called schwa. Schwa is a German word. Uh, you need to know that schwa is the most common um, unstressed vowel in English and it is also the most common vowel in English. Uh, you can see schwa in functional words like the a, uh, but, and. We see schwa in most of these words. Next is e, like met or bet. The symbol is just like e letter in English. Um, next is again e, uh, but uh, as you can see in uh, this table, uh, there are there is a colon after it. It shows that it is a long, uh, like turn or learn. Um, if you pay attention, you can see that uh, there is another symbol beside it on the left side. It is like schwa, and something is attached to it. Um, this is used in American pronunciation, um, and this symbol is called schwar. Because it is like schwa, but um, something is attached to it. This shows the sound of re in American English. For example, if you if you listen to me carefully when I uh, pronounce the words like learn or turn, you can see that um, we have a mixture of a vowel plus a re sound attached to it. So this little hook um, at the end of schwa indicates the R coloring of the vowel and um, we call it schwa. Uh, the other symbol uh, is called uh, reversed epsilon. You know epsilon is from the other side. This one is uh, reversed epsilon. We use epsilon for a sound like met and bet. If you look at your book uh, on page 41, table 2.2, .2, uh, the fourth one is a, 
we use epsilon like in head bed um, according to ipa we can use both of these symbols like letter e in english or epsilon next is e as in hit it is like capital letter i next is e as in small letter i next is r we use this r in british english uh, not in american for example hot yes or rock in american english we simply use a as in hot or rock but british english it is hot or rock next is call and for again we only use this sound o in british english in american they say call or for but in um British English, uh, they say call. Yes, call. Uh, next is U sound, as in put or could. Next is long U, like blue or food. And on the right side, you can see the diphthongs. I just read them. Um, five, I, now, ow, go home oh ver or air air say eight a near or here ear boy or join and the diphthong is oi remember that you need to learn all of these symbols As you can see, um, there is a phonetic chart of English consonants uh, in this slide that we have dealt with so far. Um, if you pay attention, you can see that there are two symbols in a single cell sometimes. Whenever there are two symbols within a single cell, the one on the left represents a voiceless sound. All other symbols represent voiced sounds. Note also uh, the consonant H which is not on this chart and the affricates um, ch and j which are uh, sequences of symbols on the chart um, in fact um, the consonant uh, charts um, enable us to understand the remark made in the first chapter uh, when we said that the sounds of English involve about 25 different gestures of the tongue and lips. Uh, here, the consonant chart has 23 different symbols, uh, but only 11 basic gestures of the tongue and the lips are uh, needed to make these different sounds. The sounds P, B and M are made with the same lip gesture. Uh, t, D, and N are alveolars. K, G, and N again are made with the same tongue gesture. So up to now we have three gestures. And uh, four more gestures are required for uh, the sounds in the fricative row, as you can see. Uh, again, three more for the central approximants and another one for the latter approximants and then making 11 in all so all in all we have 11 basic gestures for the 23 symbols you can see in the consonant chart In this slide, you can see uh, the same chart, but for vowels. And uh, this vowel chart shows the relative uh, vowel qualities represented by some of the symbols used in transcribing English. As you can see, the symbols E, A, and O occur as the first elements of diphthongs. Uh, on the left side, we have high, mid high mid mid low and low and at the top we have front central and back and because we have this uh, chart before i won't talk about it too much 
just the point is that uh, the vowel chart has 14 symbols each of which may be considered to require a separate gesture now compare it with the previous slide there we had 23 symbols but only um, 11 gestures were required here we have 14 symbols uh, and only we uh, but here we have 14 symbols and we need 14 uh, gestures um, as we have seen accents of English vary in the number of vowels that they distinguish which is why we said that English requires about 25 different gestures all in all and uh, by gestures we mean different gestures of the tongue and the lips all these sounds will also require gestures of the other three main components of the speech mechanism if you remember we said that uh, we have three um, speech mechanisms the airstream process the phonation process and the oral nasal process um, and um, the airstream process involves pushing the air out of the lungs uh, the phonation process is responsible for the gestures of the vocal folds that distinguish voiced and voiceless sounds and the oral nasal process will be active in raising and lowering the vellum uh, so as to distinguish nasal and uh, oral sounds if you remember at the beginning of this session we discussed another reason why it is only approximately true that in our transcriptions of english the symbols have the values shown in figure 2 1 and figure 2 2 in previous slides um, in this style of transcription we have been so um, far using we have focused on sounds that are distinctive or phonemic in english from this point on we will use slash lines to mark off symbols when we are explicitly using them to represent a phonemic transcription therefore for um, a phonemic transcription we use slash marks like for example in hot or but and uh, for phonetic transcription we use brackets as you can see in hot and hot if you pay attention um, as we noted it is possible uh, to include more phonetic information than this is um, uh, in uh, the phonetic transcription um, for example uh, the final t sound in words such as hot and uh, for example cat may uh, be released with a puff of air for example you say hot hot can you feel the puff of air hot t. at the end you see that there is a puff uh, of air uh, or um, maybe pronounced without a noisy release of a stop for example hot hot or hot in the first instance as you can see there is a small h uh, at top of t this shows the puff of air and we uh, show it in brackets because it is related to phonetics not phonemic uh, difference because uh, it is not meaning distinguishable and also um, th there is another uh, symbol at top of te which shows that there is no puff of air for example hot you can't even hear the t sound uh, so this is the difference between phonemic transcription and uh, phonetic uh, transcription uh, we have different uh, phonetic distributions the first one is called uh, free variation free variation occurs in identical environments just like the example i gave you in the previous slide as in hot or uh, the first one is hot uh, and the second one is hot as you can see um, we say that these are free variation uh, this is the exact opposite of a contrastive phonetic distribution 
in the case of the released and un unreleased te, we say that they are free variation. It is important to note that this pattern of variation is a property of English that may not be shared by other languages. For example, in other languages in Farsi or in Japanese, um, they only have unreleased te. And the next distribution um, uh, is called complementary distribution. Complementary distribution occurs in different environments and occurs um, in um, sounds like, for example, uh, peak and speak. If you pay attention, you can see a superscript H at top of P in peak. You see that in peak, when I say peak, uh, you hear again a puff of air and it is plosive P. Yes, as in stop. P, P, you can hear it. Uh, but in speak, this P is not plosive. You don't say speak. You say speak, but you say peak. Or uh, another example can be pill and lip. Here, the, the first one in pill, le is velarized le. But in uh, the second one, lip, le is a plain le. Uh, as you can see in these two examples, uh, th these are called complementary distributions because they occur in different environments and we show them by diacritic marks for velarization, uh, the velarized le and also the plosive uh, pe. The third uh, phonetic uh, distribution is called contrastive distinctive or phonemic distribution we talked about this distribution before and we showed it with minimal sets for example pi and tie or heat and hit um, so phonetic variation comes in three basic types contrastive free and complementary distributions as we said, the difference between contrastive distribution and uh, free variation is that uh, phonetic variation results in different words in phonemic variation. For example, in pi and tie, the phonetic variation results in different words uh, in phonemic uh, variation, while uh, phonetic variation does not result in a different word in free variation uh, for example if we say hot or we say hot um, this phonetic variation does not result in a different word in free variation also with complementary distribution when we say for example a peak uh, when we also say for example speak uh, again, this phonetic variation does not result in a different word in free variation. And in fact, when we say, for example, p and p, plain p, uh, they are both allophones of p. Notice that the first two um, are in brackets and the last one is uh, in um, s slashes. Uh, and also for velarized le and plain le, we call them to be the allophones of le in slashes. Diacritics. Uh, what are diacritics? Small marks that can be added to a symbol to modify its value are known as diacritics. As you can see, uh, we have different types of diacritics. Whenever, for example, te, de, and le occur before a dental fricative like the and the, and they are pronounced as dental stops. As in, for example, uh, tenth. 
here the pronunciation is of ne is different tenth it is dental or wealth or width and at the at the uh, as you can see we uh, use a small mark uh, below these sounds uh, in order to show that uh, they are dental Uh, another diacritic, as you can see, um, represents a voiceless sound. Uh, a small circle beneath a symbol can be used uh, to indicate that the symbol represents a voiceless sound. Uh, earlier we noted that, for example, le in play is voiceless. Yes. Accordingly, we can transcribe this word as play with uh, that small uh, symbol or a small circle beneath le sound. This shows that le is voiceless here. Another diacritic uh, is something like colon. Whenever we want to show uh, that the vowel is lengthy, we use something like a colon. Like in heat, in front of the e sound, we use colon. Uh, we will transcribe this difference in length, in fact, by adding a length mark to it. They also call it length mark, and this is a diacritic. All in all, we can say that we have uh, three different types of transcriptions. Broad transcription or phonemic, narrow transcription or phonetic, and impressionistic transcription. Broad transcription um, uses the simplest possible set of symbols, for example, please, in slash marks. Narrow transcription uses more phonetic details, for example, please, in brackets together with diacritic, as you can see the small circuit, uh, circle below uh, le sound. And impressionistic transcription uh, is when there is an unknown language. Uh, the symbols uh, show only the phonetic value of the sounds. There is no pattern of contrast and uh, complementary distribution. In fact, on first exposure to an unknown language, the field worker does not know what sort of phonetic material is going to be encountered. So, under these circumstances, an observer will be likely to refer to uh, the incoming data to the noun phonetic categories of his or her own first language. So, uh, this is called an impressionistic uh, transcription. So, today, first we talked about the difference between um, phonetics and phonology. Uh, later, we uh, talked about transcription of consonants and also transcription of vowels. Um, uh, there are two charts, a consonant chart and a vowel chart. Uh, we explained fully uh, about the lips and tongue gestures that we need in order to produce consonants and uh, vowels in these two charts. Um, afterwards, I introduced some diacritics uh, which are beneficial when you want to um, uh, transcribe phonetically. Uh, and finally, uh, three types of uh, transcriptions were mentioned. Broad transcription, and narrow transcription, and impressionistic uh, transcription. Uh, this is the end of uh, session five. Goodbye.